Hi, my name is Karen Moffat. I'm an INACAC volunteer facilitator for this session. So welcome to Capitalizing on the Capital, Exploring Indianapolis Institutions of Higher Education. I'd like to quickly go over some things on the slide for those of you joining. We have um, a couple of things to talk about. How do I ask questions? You're going to use the Q&A button to ask your questions. Do not uh, use the chat. You can ask questions at any time. Make sure your camera and microphone are turned off. Sign up for more sessions. There is an, um, a link right here, inacact.org backslash virtual college exploration, where you can sign up for more sessions. And a recording will be available after the sessions are over. And the website is also listed on this screen. Now I'm going to turn it over to our presenters. Thank you. Awesome, thanks so much. And I will go ahead and share my screen. Oh, started in the middle. Let me go back, there we go. All right, um, so welcome, welcome. Can everyone see my screen? Okay, perfect. Um, well, um, as the moderator shared, welcome to Capitalizing on the Capital. Um, we have a variety of institutions here. Uh, I, Whitney Ramsey, am representing Butler, and we've got several others. So we'll go ahead and kick things off um, with a quick introduction of ourselves. Um, so I'll go ahead and start since I'm up there first. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Whitney Ramsey, and I am an Assistant Director of Admission for Multicultural Recruitment at Butler. And I'm Michelle Miller. I am the Associate Director of Freshman Admission at Marion University. Um, good afternoon. My name is Alice Matuk. I'm the Senior Admissions Counselor at IUPUI. And my name is Katie Ashcroft. And I am the Director of Admissions Recruitment at the University of Indianapolis. Awesome. Um, so we will go ahead and start um, with a quick overview, kind of the format of our, of our presentation is going to be, we're going to start with a quick overview of each institution. Um, and then what we will do is kind of uh, dive into what we all have in common, right, Indianapolis, um, and how our students are leveraging Indianapolis in different ways. So students will give you a chance to introduce yourselves in a little bit here. Um, but again, um, I will give a quick overview of Butler. Um, so we are a small private liberal arts institution. Um, a lot of students will ask, exactly how small um, and you'll see we're just under about 5,000 students. Um, so that makes us kind of uniquely sized. We're not the super small, we're not the big state. Uh, we're still a smaller school with what we think are the benefits of a smaller school. Um, but we're often told that we feel a little bit larger and I think that's partially due uh, to our division one athletics and partially due to our big fine arts scene. Um, but you'll see on campus, we have an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio, which creates an average class size of about 22. Um, notable majors, and I always share these much to our professor's dismay because they always want to think that all of their majors are the most notable. Um, but pharmacy, physician assistant, and dance are our three nationally ranked programs. So certainly within Indiana and outside of Indiana, we are uh, often recognized for those three programs. We also have our majors divided into what we call academic colleges. Um, it's simply our way of classifying our majors. Um, and those colleges are titled in communication, education, pharmacy and health sciences, liberal arts and sciences, business and the arts. Um, so based on that, that kind of gives you a feel of kind of where our emphases are. Um, athletics, as I mentioned, we are division one, though we certainly have a robust club sport scene and intramural scene. Uh, and our football team does compete in the Pioneer League. We are, again, since we are all uh, from Indianapolis, thought kind of we'd give you some perspective and share how far we are from the center of downtown, uh, or if we're in downtown. Um, so you'll see we are about five miles north uh, of downtown. At the bottom there, um, should you be interested in Butler, we wanted to highlight some scholarship opportunities that you may be interested in. Um, all students are automatically considered for academic scholarships when they apply. And then when they do submit their application, they typically receive an email that says, hey, thanks for applying. Here are some additional scholarships you might be interested in. Um, and that's where you would see the Morton Finney Diversity Scholar Award, uh, the Center for Faith and Vocation Scholarship, and our Legacy Award. 
We also offer talent-based awards. Um, so if you are planning on competing at the Division I athletic level, uh, or if you are interested uh, in majoring in the arts, you'll have the opportunity to either audition or share a portfolio uh, for Jordan College of the Arts. And then lastly, if you happen to be located in Indianapolis, uh, home to this presentation, uh, we do have our Butler tuition guarantee, which is 10 full tuition scholarships to students who attend high school in Marion County. Um, so with that, I will go ahead and pass it over to Alice with IUPUI. Alice, you're muted. <laughs> Thank you. All right, well again, good afternoon. Um, so again, my name is Alice and IUPUI is a public um, research university. Um, we are uh, the third largest university in the state of Indiana with um, a um, little over 20,000 undergraduate students on our campus. Um, so even though we are a large campus, 70% um, so, um, of our classes are about 30 to one, but with a student faculty ratio of 17 to one. So students still get um, small class sizes and get to know their professors. Um, in terms of majors that we offer, um, we have a large variety of majors at IUPUI, and depending upon what a student ultimately studies, they'll earn that Indiana University degree or the Purdue University degree. So we've got the IU Kelly School of Business, um, we've got dental hygiene, um, education um, with a focus on urban education, engineering, technology majors, um, we've got the Heron School of Art and Design that provides fine arts degrees, um, informatics, um, nursing, public health, um, science, social work. Um, and if a student's studying engineering, technology, or science, they'll be earning that Purdue University degree. But some unique majors um, include forensic sciences, motorsports engineering, because we're the home of racing with the Indy 500 just around the corner from us. And that took place this last August, but traditionally held in May. Um, music therapy, music technology, and we've got the um, only school of philanthropy in the world offering a philanthropic studies degree. So, those are some majors um, that we offer at IUPUI. And um, in terms of athletics, um, we are Division I athletics in the Horizon League Conference. We also have intramural and recreational sports on campus. Um, in terms of our location, we are situated in downtown Indianapolis within walking distance to White River State Park. That includes Idle Jordan Native American Indian Museum, um, NCAA headquarters, um, you know, and many other um, places, um, you know, that are um, accessible to our students. Um, in downtown Indy. Um, in terms of scholarship opportunities, we have some admission-based scholarships that are automatic when students meet certain criteria. Jaguar Excellence Award, um, the Bevco Scholars and Fellows Program um, held in the Honors College. Um, there's diversity scholarship uh, research programs, uh, the Norman Brown Diversity and Leadership Scholars Program, um, Nina um, Polium Scholars Program. Um, there's service scholars uh, programs with the Sam H. Jones Community Scholars Program. Um, Sam Maseraki Scholars Program, just to name a few scholarship opportunities that are available at IUPUI. Great, so um, we'll take it back to the smaller schools. So like I mentioned, my name is Michelle Miller. And uh, Marion University is a small private liberal arts school about five miles northwest of downtown Indianapolis. And so we are just a couple minutes down the road from Butler University um, and just a few minutes away from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway that Alice just alluded to. So we're kind of snug right in the middle of, of those two. Um, we do have a little over 2,500 undergraduate students. Um, if you were to take our entire student population, it's going to be a little bit closer to 3,500 if you were to include the medical school and some graduate programs. But undergrad alone is a little closer to that 2,500 mark. We do have a 13 to 1 student faculty ratio. Um, an average class size is around 20 students. Some of our most notable majors, I started with our most popular. So nursing pretty much year in and year out is our most popular major, followed by biology with that pre-medicine track, um, followed then by management and marketing within the School of Business, um, and then exercise science. Some of our newer majors on campus that I wanted to highlight are business analytics, uh, nutrition, fitness, and wellness, social work, and theater. 
those are all new within the last year or two um, that we've brought onto campus. And then um, some unique ones or ones that we will be adding next year would be pastoral leadership. So Marion is a Franciscan Catholic institution and so we do have a, a strong faith-based presence on campus, as well as environmental science and supply chain management and logistics. So those last two are gonna be coming online for us uh, starting the fall of 2021. For athletics, we are NAIA, which is closest to Division II. If you compare to NCAA, so we do offer athletic scholarships for our student athletes, um, as well as some intramural and recreational sports. Um, and then lastly, down near the bottom, some of our scholarships to mention. Um, so we do have six different academic-based scholarships. Um, that you are automatically considered for once you apply. We do have those athletic awards as well as some fine arts awards. So these would be for things like marching band, show choir, theater, and visual arts, as well as a pretty active speech and debate team, not just within the region, but really across the country, there's a scholarship for that. Um, our San Damiano Scholars Program is our faith-based program on campus. So um, there's an opportunity to earn some scholarship money for that as well. The Luger Fellow Global Study Scholarship, that is really designed for students that are looking to maybe study abroad or you know, get into some of those current events and cultures um, classes. And so that's an opportunity to take advantage of that with that scholarship. There are a couple unique things that you'll see listed down there. The Diocesan and St. Vincent Employee Family Grants, those would be specifically for students that have parents that work full time for any of the dioceses or any St. Vincent Health Network. There could be some additional aid supplemented into your financial aid offer. Um, and then lastly, just some Marian tuition and housing grants that do vary um, quite a bit from student to student. But that's a snapshot of Marion. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me, like um, I said earlier, my name is Katie Ashcraft and I am the Director of um, Admissions Recruitment here at the University of Indianapolis. So we are a private institution located about five miles south of the um, downtown area. Our undergraduates, um, we're just over 4,000, so I like to tell students that we are a medium sized school, so we're right in between small and medium, and we're able to offer you a lot of one-on-one -on -one education, but still give you a lot of the um, big school opportunities that, um, that we have here on campus for you. Our student to faculty ratio is 13 to one. Average class size is gonna be around 15 to 20, really kind of depending on um, what your major is. So going down to some of our notable majors, you will see exercise science with pre-athletic training and pre, or pre-athletic training and pre-physical therapy. Criminal justice, which has um, concentrations in forensic science, cybersecurity, just to name a few. Um, our new, brand, our newish School of Engineering, it's been around about five years now. Um, biology, nursing, art therapy, public health education promotion, respiratory therapy, social work, sport management, and psychology with preoccupational therapy. Um, we are nationally known for um, our Doctorate of Occupational Therapy and Doctorate of Physical Therapy programs along with our Bachelors of Science in Nursing. We are NCAA Division II. We are in the Great Lakes Valley Conference, so we are able to give athletic scholarships. Um, however, that lies with the um, ability of the coach. That is not my bank to play with. So um, the coaches um, can answer any questions you might have about any kind of athletic scholarship. Um, down here, it also talks about um, our last row there. Um, we do have um, academic-based scholarship, our Richard Luger Merit Awards that are automatically given to students um, as they are accepted to the university. We do have presidential scholarships, tomorrow's teacher's award for those students that are wanting to major in education, crossroad connection for our students that are coming from Illinois, art and music scholarships, bone chemistry scholarships. We do have scholarships for the speech team, La Alice Briggs Nursing and United Methodist Youth Leaders. So those are some of the opportunities that we have here at the University of Indianapolis for our students. Great, so um, before we kind of switch gears and get to um, arguably the more exciting part of the presentation, um, our current students who have joined us, um, we, we just want to um, kind of, or I want to um, kind of, again, capitalize um, you see what I did there, capitalize 
uh, on the idea that we are in Indianapolis um, and that's what brings us all here together, right, is the opportunities that our location affords us. Um, and in fact, most of us when talking about what sets our institutions apart, um, we talk about our academic programs, we talk about our scholarship opportunities, um, but we also talk about our location. Um, we think of it as sort of the trifecta of, um, you know, fantastic place for internships and research opportunities, uh, a place that's accessible, both if you think about where we are uh, within the country, as well as by air, we're not far from Indianapolis International Airport, none of us are, um, and just the several different distinct social scenes that we offer. Um, certainly the downtown scene, if you're interested in the big stuff, right? Concerts, sporting events. Um, we do have Mass Ave, um, which is kind of a more hipster, trendy area. Um, a lot of our Butler students, I've heard them say that if they were to take someone on a date, they would take them to Mass Ave. Um, and then lastly, um, Broad Ripple, which is um, especially close to Butler, but I think a lot of students are drawn uh, there. Over 130 restaurants, dining, nightlife options. Um, and so where we really wanted to kind of drive home Indianapolis um, is to share a little bit more um, about our students, right? And how they've connected with Indianapolis. So before we do that, um, I've got kind of a, a special video to share. Meet me at the crossroads. Can you hear it? From the stands to the snake pit, feel the rush. Of the 500. We do just keep tradition. And we keep it moving. On the trail. In the trees. Or on the water. Step through time. Or discover a new story. Sinus clearing shrimp cocktail. Wrap your hands around the China pork tenderloin or taste our global flavors. From fine art to street art. The big stage to small. Experience it here. Make lots of noise. But just be still. Come to see an old friend. Or find a new one. <laughs> it may feel like home. Or maybe far from it. But wherever you find yourself, no you can always find yourself here. All right, that's sort of our Indianapolis pump up video. Is everyone feeling pumped up about Indianapolis? <laughs> With that, um, again, we would like to showcase some of our students. Um, and so um, we will go ahead and um, I think it was you, Indy, going to focus on healthcare. Katie, do you want to go ahead and introduce your student? Sure. So um, here at the University of Indianapolis, we're really excited. Some of our top programs are focused around healthcare. Um, joining us today, I have Tori, and I will let her um, kind of introduce herself and then tell about her internship that she had with Roche Diagnostics. So Tori, do you want to take it away? Yep, I sure can. Um, so hi, my name is Tori Akles. I am from Brown County, Indiana, uh, and that's where I went to high school as well. Graduated in 2017. Um, my majors are in biology and Spanish with a minor in chemistry. And uh, like Katie said, I had my internship this past summer with Roche, which was a fantastic opportunity. Um, it was different than it normally is. I'm sure you can guess why, because um, this year has been anything except normal, but it was still really a great opportunity. We did it online. Um, so we weren't able to really partake of the field options that they normally do, but we were, me and the fellow interns for Roche were still able to experience um, some of the uh, 
some of the jobs that workers at Roche had to do going through old um, old accounts they had, clearing some things out, as well as uh, some other tasks. Um, and it was it was an experience I really enjoyed. Awesome. Am I allowed to ask a question? <laughs> Absolutely. Tori, I think one of the things that students are hearing a lot now is um, they're starting to understand at this point in the college church the importance of internships, um, but not quite sure how they're going to find those internships. Um, can you speak a little bit to how kind of you were connected with this opportunity or found this opportunity? What kind of the application interview process looked like for you? Um, yeah, so the most common place you can, I can say is a lot of schools, well, I would say all schools, but I've not been to all colleges, have some group to help uh, undergrads um, connect with different internships. So for example, at UN do we have our Pro Edge. I came across the internship at Roche by luck. <laughs> I was um, meeting with a professor and a student was talking with another person nearby about the internship. I'm like, hey, what, what's that? Tell me about that. And uh, I applied for the internship. You fill out an application sheet for specifically for Roche. You had to meet with the internship manager a couple of times. And then um, you had your interview. You had two interviews with two different people. And they asked, you know, some of the general questions. Um, what's your major? You know, what do you see yourself doing? Things like that. So I'd say comparably it was a pretty, it was a tense process just because um, for me, it was my first time doing interviews and doing stuff such as that, but it had great, um, it, it had, oh my goodness, what's the word? The outcome was really amazing. Awesome. Um, and I think too, sorry, I'm going to ask another question. I think too, a lot of students, um, I know when I was going through school, I understood I needed an internship, but I wasn't looking at it as I was looking at it as like, this is how I'm going to satisfy my internship requirement. It wasn't like, this is how I actually like try on the job shoes that I might want to wear. Um, so has this shaped, you know, uh, I, I think sometimes it's just as valuable to have an internship that you that tells you what you don't want to do as what you do. Um, so how do you feel like this is maybe kind of shaped moving forward? Has it confirmed? Has it denied maybe what you're interested in? Tell us about that. Um, it kind of changed what I was interested in. Initially, I really want to do, do a lot of lab work and still I would like to do that. But um, I found my strengths through this internship um, was doing things like information management, which is kind of uh, some of the work I was doing. So it, re it reinforced um, what, what I want to do, part of it. Um, it put me on the right path on figure out what I want to do with my career. Awesome. Any of our other panelists have any questions for Tori? All right. Well, we will head to our next uh, student that we want to showcase. Um, Michelle, do you want to go ahead and introduce Lenny? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Lenny is a senior here at Marion. I'll let you tell um, a little bit more about yourself, Lenny. Um, but as soon as the four of us were, were putting together this presentation and we decided that we wanted to talk about you know, some things that we feel like Indianapolis is really known for, athletics being one of them. I immediately called dibs. I was like, okay, <laughs> I know who I want to have talked. Um, you know, my mind immediately went to Lenny. Um, and really just because there is so much to talk about in terms of athletics in Indianapolis, everything from, you know, the Indianapolis Colts to our, you know, minor league baseball team with the Indians and the in, the Fever, um, even down to our collegiate athletics here and, and quite a robust high school athletic scene. And so we really felt like as a group that it was important to touch on um, this uh, even just a little bit. And so I'll, I'll let Lenny take it from there. 
Hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, my name is Lenny. I am a senior here at Marion this year. Um, I am a communication major with a minor in sociology, and I also have a concentration in uh, multimedia journalism. Um, I'm very involved on campus, as you can probably see on the slide. Um, so I am an ambassador on campus, so I help giving t I help with giving tours and things like that. Um, I work a lot here in the admissions office, to be quite honest. Um, I also do an internship um, with our events and marketing um, within the admissions office and I'm also the news editor for the student newspaper the Marion Phoenix. Um, I'm really excited to get to talk to you all today um, because I love Indianapolis and I'm so excited to share the work that I have been doing with the Indianapolis Colts. Um, so this is my second season working with the Indianapolis Colts. Um, last year I served as an events intern so I worked um, with their events department helping out with training camp that they hold up in Westfield at Grand Park. Um, and I also helped out with special event days um, that was actually throughout the state. Um, and then I got to help out with game days, um, which was so much fun. Um, that kind of led into uh, my second year with the Colts this year. Um, I'm actually working in a different department. So I work with our guest relations team, um, which is kind of under the ticketing side of um, the Colts, I guess you could say. Um, and that has been a lot of fun. Things are a little bit different with that role than it would traditionally be. This year, we're um, just mainly helping people get into the stadium. Um, usually, there would be a uh, some more fan interaction stuff, um, which is probably my favorite part of my job with the Colts. Um, but like I said, things are a little bit different this year. Um, I absolutely love working for the Colts. Um, it's been a dream of mine to work for the Colts since I was five years old. Um, I grew up about an hour southeast of here. Um, I'm actually from Greensburg, Indiana. Um, and so everything about Indy just always excited me, but especially the Colts. Um, so having the opportunity has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'll kind of walk you through how that internship happened in the first place. So um, I worked a lot with um, our professional development program here at Marion called The Exchange, I'm working on my resume and my cover letter. Um, but like I said, I've been wanting to work for the Colts for a really long time. So I, I've had my eye on this internship since the day I got to Marion. Um, so I was finally able to apply um, at, towards the, it was uh, about the middle of my junior year, or, my sophomore year when I had applied for it. Um, and I just kind of went for it. Uh, I was very, very grateful to get an interview. Um, and then I found out I got the job and it, it has just, it's been phenomenal getting to work um, in this industry. Um, and throughout my um, internship, that has really solidified uh, me knowing that I want to work in sports in some capacity. Um, I would love, love to work for the Colts, um, but Indianapolis has so many different um, sports programs to offer to people that are interested in, um, whether it's um, the Colts, the Pacers, um, the Indians, um, even the NCAA headquarters is located here. Uh, we have a lot going on as far as sports um, and sporting events, especially like national sporting events come to Indy a lot. Um, I've know, I know we've hosted a lot of Final Four games um, and different things like that. So if you're looking for a place uh, that's gonna offer you a lot of um, like sports and whatnot, Indy is definitely a great place for that. Awesome. Thanks, Lenny. Yeah. Panelists, anything that we're missing from Lenny? That was a great, she covered all my follow-up questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard Indianapolis called the amateur sports capital of the world. So <laughs> as Lenny shared, lots of different opportunities mm -hmm. to be involved. Mm -hmm. um, my one question was going to be, you know, so now it's coming down to senior year, right? Post-graduation plans and, you know, any chance, and it sounds like you may very well be interested in working for the Colts should the opportunity arise. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that, that is my game plan if the opportunity is there. Awesome. All right. We will go next to Izzy. Alice, do you want to introduce Izzy? Yes. Um, so again, um, in terms of capitalizing on technology in Indianapolis, I will have Izzy share her internship experience with Journey websites and you know her involvement, um, you know, at IUPUI too. So 
I'll turn it over to Izzy. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Isabel, but my people do call me Izzy. That's my nickname. So yes, thank you. I, I prefer that actually. Um, so uh, to start, kind of start off who I am, what I do, what I'm interested in. Um, so I'm currently um, on campus. I am the Latino Outreach Ambassador for the School of Informatics and Computing. I am, my goal for in this role is to drive more diversity into tech, uh, specifically Latino students. Uh, may, I'm very passionate about just, you know, bringing more of people that look like me to tech and it's a great field and it's amazing and it's growing. So that's what I'm uh, doing on campus right now. I'm also um, an, an informatics ambassador. So along with the uh, Latino outreach ambassador, I'm the informatics ambassador. In, our, in the past, I have been an uh, O-team first year seminar measure, uh, mentor. So that was last year. I ended up finishing that um, just before COVID started. So I definitely uh, um, was able to was able to give got great experience in. I've always also a peer mentor for my scholarship program this past year and it was really great just to give back to uh, the people that have given me so much and that have been able to bring me to what I am where I am today. Um, so my right, getting right into my internship. So I actually did two internships this summer. Uh, Journey websites was focused more on the tech side. So that's why I decided to talk about this one. So Journey websites is a small non for profit non for profit ministry uh, based a website that is based out of Indianapolis, specifically South Bend, Indianapolis. It's completely run online. So um, especially in the tech world, everything that was a every, especially in the tech um, as tech in Indianapolis is really, really rising. Uh, so I don't know if you guys have heard of CICP and this, the whole um, X turn different, different, probably not. So these terms that I'm saying probably never heard about. Uh, but there's definitely the what I'm what I'm talking about is uh, the rising tech uh, kind of internship programs that are rising around Indianapolis. So specifically, uh, what what I was focusing on in my internship was kind of date uh, kind of user experience, but as well as like business and analy uh, business analyst. So I a big part of what I did during my internship was kind of help our not only set up procedures. So I was technically I was technically but. I was writing up procedures for our current, our current, uh, our current like uh, things that we were, our current like procedures that we had for each client that we were ga gaining. But we, I also was in charge of implementing a new program called As Asana, and this program was actually a data analytics program that we were able to connect to each of our clients' web servers and websites, as well as all of their social media, and it pulled it all into one centralized location. So with, I was in charge of kind of just putting all of the, our clients information, but also coming up with surveys in different types of forums to kind of hand out to our, to our clients. And so that we could get feedback on what exactly, what information would be more utilized for them. Uh, like help them like, okay, where, where are we not growing? Where are we growing kind of, uh, and keep in mind, like these are all small businesses, all non for profits. So these, these, uh, these, these clients were very much not the most tech savvy. So it was a very big challenge as well as, you know, trying to, uh, trying to cater to their needs. And I think that's what, that, that's what drove me to informatics was, you know, that not everyone's tech savvy, not everyone understands or knows how tech works in a way. So really trying to hone in on like, okay, how do I make this, you know, easy for you to use? How can I make this more accessible to you? Um, so definitely love informatics for that. Um, and that's what drove me to informatics, obviously. Uh, so obviously my specialization is applied data science, as you can see with all the data things I've done. Uh, but I'm also uh, doing research on the side. Uh, I'm a published author. I don't, I don't know. Just throwing that out there. Um, uh, so yeah, <laughs> just, uh, so yeah, I've also uh, been uh, doing a lot. So definitely if you have any questions on tech on just, um, oh, wait, uh, one more last thing, uh, how I've actually found my internship. So both of my internships, uh, I found one, I got an email for directly, which uh, the one that what I got an email for was uh, Ascend Indiana, or Ascend Indiana, which is a um, workforce development company that is centralized in Indiana, which helps students all across Indiana get specifically internships in Indiana. So really about, you know, driving that Indiana, you know, tech, but also, you know, ev 
it's for all majors. It's not just for tech. Uh, so I internship with them. But with a journey, I was able to hop on to a website called Indiana.net or Indiana in, Indian intern.net. Um, and I've actually found my internship on there. I sent in my resume and my cover letter and I got an interview with um, the C, the C, the creator, so the CEO. Uh, her name was um, Angela and she was really kind and I was super nervous, but uh, it was nothing I hadn't done before. Uh, but it was definitely um, a learning experience, especially doing it online uh, and especially doing this internship online. Um, but that's the great thing about tech. Everything can kind of transfer onto online. So. Awesome. Thank you, Izzy. And I can't remember, did you say what year you are at IUPUI? I'm a junior, so I'll be going into my senior year next year. Okay, and how is this? I know you've had now two different experiences simultaneously. How have they kind of shaped? You still got plenty of time before graduation. I don't want to put that kind of <laughs> pressure on you, but how has that kind of shaped what you may be thinking about post graduation? Yeah, of course. Uh, so, I, I guess that I what what Ascend and Journey both had in common that was that they were very people, but people that. Uh, don't really know and or what they both had in common was that they were both giving back to the community so I think that that's what I want to do with my tech degree is kind of uh, go into some industry in some field that gives back to my community uh, especially and especially because that's what I did this summer um, especially with the, uh, being able to see the work I did like I, I dealt with data I, I was working I was working with data but I was also working with you know clients and being able to um, kind of tailored to them. So I think that it definitely helped me see that I definitely want to go into a field that I'm helping and I'm always like, um, I'm making a difference more or less like industry where it's like, uh, which is great fields where there's a lot of industry <laughs> to go into. Let me not disencourage you. But personally for me, um, I definitely want to go into something that uh, is more community based. Awesome. Thank you. And then last but not least, we've got Caitlin here, um, who is one of our beloved Butler student ambassadors. Um, but Caitlin, I will let you um, introduce yourself, share a little bit about what you're involved in on campus, um, and a little bit about your new internship. Yes, hi everyone, I'm Caitlin. I'm a senior here at Butler. Um, I'm from Chesterfield, Michigan, which is actually a suburb of Detroit, so I'm about five-ish hours away. Um, I am actually an anthropology and German double major. Um, I switched that during my sophomore year, um, which was like kind of exciting for me. Um, and then also like aside um, from working in the admissions office, I give tours um, throughout campus. Um, I also am involved in Greek life here at Butler. Um, I've studied abroad about three different times um, and I also play club soccer. Um, and so this semester, um, I have my first internship with the Children's Museum downtown. Um, it's only about like an eight minute drive from Butler, so it's super close. Um, but my internship is within like the STEM galleries interpretation team. So um, luckily, um, I'm actually able to go in to the museum for half my um, internship time. So I actually work two days a week in the museum um, on the floor with um, and working within their Dinosphere exhibit, which has been like super fun. And I've been learning different programs um, within their interactive exhibits, um, which has been really fun to be able to actually like learn that. Um, I really don't know exactly what I wanna go into post-grad. So this internship has been really helpful with trying to kind of gauge where I wanna go. Um, after I graduate in May, um, I've always been interested in working within a museum environment. Um, and so especially with an anthropology degree that um, aligns really well with it. Um, this past year, um, I actually was looking for an internship and I was talking with my anthropology um, major advisor and she really helped me to kind of gauge um, some places that I should apply to. And so this summer I applied to the Children's Museum um, and I had to send in a cover letter, my resume, um, all that stuff. And then I got an interview a few weeks later um, who is actually with um, my mentor now and somebody else who works within the interpretations team at the museum. And then a week later I got it um, and I started about mid-September. So I've been there for about four or five weeks. Awesome. And tell us, I mean, kind of if I think it's, it's 
it seems like our, our interns who have spent time at the Children's Museum, I really, you really get kind of like a behind the scenes look at such an incredible and sort of renowned um, museum. Um, I think it's also interesting because that, that internship, I'm sure, is highly sought after. Um, I think there are a lot of folks looking at the Children's Museum. Um, so it sounds like this may have started with a conversation with your, um, with your advisor. Can you kind of walk us through a little bit of like application, interview, what that looked like? Yeah, for sure. So I think I started, so I was actually abroad last semester in the spring. So I had a Zoom meeting with my advisor um, around March, just kind of check in schedule wise, but also um, she knew that I was planning on having an internship during my senior year. And so I brought that conversation up and she brought up a few museums downtown. That'd be really awesome um, to intern with, to be able to like get like insider experience on um, and the Children's Museum was one of them that a lot of Butler students have had internships at in the past. And so when the application um, came out on the Children's Museum website, I just kind of Googled um, and you could find their application process within there. Um, and so with that, I had to fill out um, just kind of like my basic information. I just submit a, my cover letter and then also a resume my resume um, and I had a few of my um, friends look over that um, and also with a cover letter because I've never written a cover lover letter actually before this internship. And so um, I had a few friends um, help me look over that and send me cover letters that they wrote in the past that really helped um, just kind of like gauge like, all right, like what should I have, which I'd like lay everything out as all that stuff. Um, and so I submitted all of that um, with like the initial like, application process and then um, a few weeks later I got an email from um, for the specific internship because um, the application process was for like just a regular full-on any internship at the Children's Museum and I could select after that um, a few internships that I was looking for specifically and then I got the email back um, for the STEM interpretations um, internship and so from there we scheduled an interview and then from there I received the internship. Awesome. And I understand you keep using the word interpretation, which sounds like a fancy um, museum word. Um, tell me a little bit more about kind of your role or tell me briefly kind of what, I know you mentioned the Dinosphere, which is huge, but kind of what your day-to-day -day looks like. Yeah, so something really, I feel like unique to just like this semester in general, like luckily I'm, I am able to go into the museum two times a week, but I also do Zoom meetings and research um, throughout the week as well. Um, so it's a pretty like hefty internship for me time-wise, but also when I go into the museum, I do more stuff like on the floor. I'm learning a program right now with one of the specific dinosaurs. And so that goes along with the interpretations team. They in general at the museum just really try to work with different programs that they can put on within each exhibit. And so I'm working specifically within the dinosphere exhibit within like the different programs that they're doing and then they're also um, going to be putting out some new exhibits within the next few years too. So um, the work that I do at home is more research for those exhibits and Zoom meetings with that. So I'm getting to meet a lot more people within um, who work at the museum. So not just within the interpretations team, but then exhibit planning, family learning, um, all the different aspects of like that would go into planning an exhibit and mm -hmm. so that's been really awesome to be able to just like meet the people who like focus on different jobs within that and just like different jobs in general in a museum because I've never also worked in a museum environment before um so I didn't really know exactly like what kind of jobs like go into where so that has been really awesome to be able to like talk to different people within that um and just to hear like specifically like what they try and focus on within the museum and the children's museum specifically really tries to focus on that family learning aspect. So not just teaching the kids who come in and like helping them engage with um, the interactive things and the exhibits that we have, but also making sure that their families and the adults that come with them are also engaging. And so seeing that like the planning at the beginning stage of the exhibits to how they actually try to engage with that when they have the exhibits is, has been like really interesting. And so I have been kind of like part of like all different parts of planning an exhibit and like helping with current programs in their current dinosphere. And so I've been able to see like a lot of different steps within that, which has been really awesome. Awesome. Thank you. 
Well, we are almost up on time here really quick. Um, can I get the students, students to candidly share favorite place in Indy? Uh, I can go. Um, the favorite place I've been to so far would be between the canal in downtown and then um, not too far away from Indianapolis, there's a place called the Nine Lives Cat Cafe where you can pet cats and drink coffee. I love cats and coffee. It's the perfect combination. Awesome. Um, I can go ahead and go next. Um, I really like um, coming to India. I didn't really know like exactly like what was here. I didn't grow up around Indianapolis, um, but we have some really awesome parks around, which I didn't really know exactly. I was like, it's Indianapolis. It's the Midwest. You're not going to find like cool parks or whatever, but um, one of my favorites is actually Eagle Creek Park. Um, it's so pretty and there's the White River that runs through there too. So we have like, so you can go like walking on by the water and stuff like that. And it's a really awesome place to go walk around. Um, then I also just like um, the Broad Ripple area. That's, I always love to say when I give tours to families that it's kind of like Butler's college town that we just kind of stole um but um with that there's just so many like awesome um restaurants um around there and cool like little boutiques to kind of walk around and see um and it's just like a really fun place to go with like your friends on the weekends um and that's those are probably like my two favorite places Linny is he quick answer <laughs> we're gonna get cut off here shortly <laughs> I was just going to say basically what Caitlin had said. Um, I really like going down to Broad Ripple as well. It's pretty close to Marion, so I like going out to eat there and hanging out with friends. I think mine's complete opposite. I really like to go to Riverside Park, which is right by Marion University. Um, it has a lot of just action on the weekends, especially, you know, diversity, all, all of there. Um, just recently went to a baseball game there. Uh, they have like rec leagues, uh, like Hispanic rec leagues, so I love going there and just watching the games. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much. Um, I don't think we left much time for questions, um, but all of our contact information as admission staff are on our websites and we're happy, I'm sure our students would be happy to answer any lingering questions as well. So um, thank you for joining us this evening. And I'll jump in. Thank you for joining us. Um, there is a quick survey for questions. Sign up for more sessions and recordings are available. Thank you. Bye-bye.